The important questions that you want to ask are revolving around the objections that they're going to give you. What is your budget? What are the, some of the price ranges that you've paid for before? What did your last web designer cost you? Or what were the previous things that you liked about your graphic designer? How has the communication been? And why did you just decide to call me today? Here's another good one. What is the biggest factor in you making a decision today? Today, I want to talk about the seven things that you're doing as a freelancer that's costing you money in sales. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first mistake that I see all the time is not doing your research up front. This is a big mistake. Information is power. If you don't have information going into your meeting, you haven't done any due diligence, you don't know who they are, what they do, why they do it, or anything about them, you're really going in blind. So I really wanna encourage you to spend the time before the meeting, before the sales appointment, to actually get to know them and do your research upfront. Whether that's a half an hour, an hour, 15 minutes, you need to be prepared for that meeting and not just be blind. If you show up to the meeting unprepared and, and don't have any information, the good clients are gonna notice that. People who are unprepared themselves and who are just flying by the seat of their pants aren't gonna notice, but the people that you want to work with are going to pay attention to things like that. So you need to do your research in advance. And you need to make sure that after the meeting that you save some time for yourself to write down all the things in that meeting and then send them a follow-up email. A lot of people don't do this, but I wanna make sure that you use information to your best ability and that you actually are able to utilize that and actually separate yourself from the rest of your competition because your competitors are not doing this. The second mistake that I see people making is they give away way too much time. An hour, hour and a half, sometimes even two hours. I did this myself. You do not wanna just give away as much time as possible to somebody to try to close them, uh, do a one call close. That is not an effective use of your time. You're not gonna be able to have as many sales conversations. You won't be able to make as many offers and it's gonna really hurt your bottom line. So what I do is I have discovery calls first. Before I talk to anybody, we get on a 15 minute phone call and we ask three specific questions. What's your mission or vision, right? Mission vision is really important. If they don't have that, they're very early to the party and they may not be a good fit for you yet. I know if somebody doesn't have that for me, I'm usually not able to help them yet. I ask them to go back to the drawing board, really get clear about what their mission and vision is. They need to have those things. This is a really important piece when you're doing these discovery calls to ask, really understanding what is it that they're going after. The second question that I like to ask are what are the roadblocks? Once you understand what their mission and their vision is, and then you can identify the roadblocks, that will start to give you a roadmap of where you can take them and some of the things that you can help them with. And maybe as simple as building a sales funnel, building a better website, driving more traffic. These are just some examples of roadblocks that they're gonna have in their way, or even just how do I do social media marketing or how do I get clarity on my brand? Some people have a lack of clarity and that's really where they need the most help. And that's where you can come in and be a consultative type of person for them rather than just a fulfillment person. And this is an area that you can add more value, which we're gonna talk about here in just a minute. The third question that I always ask is what is your 12 month goal? So mission, vision, roadblocks, and 12 month goal. These are very, very important pieces to ask. You wanna know where that person wants to be in 12 months from now. Hey, Mr. Customer, we're sitting here at the table in this meeting on the phone in 12 months from now. Where do you wanna be? Where do you see your business at in 12 months? What would be an ideal situation for you? That gives you an objective and an end goal and something that you can shoot for. This is really valuable information to get as early on in the process as possible so you can help really craft a plan that's gonna work for them and make them feel heard. Once they're telling you what their pain points are, and you actually repeat that back to them. It sounds like you need some brand clarity. It sounds like you really need some help driving some better traffic and your content strategy just isn't where you want it to be. Does that sound right? Those are things that are gonna make them go, wow, this guy is actually taking, or this gal is taking the time to really get to know me. And that's gonna help you stand out from everybody else. The third mistake, and this one, oh man, it drives me crazy, is asking the wrong questions. So, well, where'd you grow up? And why did you start your business? And how long have you been in business? Those things you can get to later on down the road. But the important questions that you wanna ask are revolving around the objections that they're gonna give you. You wanna ask questions like, hey, what's your budget? There are so many graphic designers, marketers, web designers that never ask this question because they're super uncomfortable and scared to ask the question. What is your budget? What are the, some of the price ranges that you've paid for before? What did your last web designer cost you? Or what were the previous things that you liked about your graphic designer? How has the communication been? And why did you just decide to call me today? Here's another good one. 
What is the biggest factor in you making a decision today? These are the questions that you can ask that are gonna help you identify objections, understand budgets, and really get clear right out of the gate. So I really want you to make sure you emphasize on this one specifically, ask better questions. The fourth mistake, and this is one that will not just hurt you upfront, but long-term, you will lose the client long-term. If you wanna just bring somebody on and have them for a month or two, or maybe even three months, then cool. But if you want a long-term relationship, then you need to focus your conversations and your sales conversations on setting expectations. A lot of people do not do this because they're afraid that it's gonna scare the customer away or that they're gonna not wanna do the deal or they're gonna go out and shop you. You need to set expectations properly. What level of, of communication do you expect from them? What should they expect from you? How often are you gonna be meeting with them? How, what are some of the issues that you see with your clients? Setting those expectations up front of what to expect, what's the turnaround time, um, what kind of deposit they need to put down, when the project actually starts. This is a big one. So when you actually start a project for somebody and you don't set the expectations, they start adding other things onto the project. And that's what happens when they call scope creep. Scope creep is very common in the graphic design, web design, and motion design industry because you didn't set the expectations up front clear. So make sure you write down the deliverables and make sure you set the expectations time-wise, relationship-wise, service, price, that all those expectations are out up front and on the table. This is a big area that will hurt you in the immediate and in the long term. And I really wanna make sure that you put emphasis on this. The fifth mistake that I see very often is people selling price versus value. Stop selling price. Stop selling price, seriously. That is a losing battle. All it is is a race to the bottom. They're not interested in price, they're interested in the outcome that you can give to them. So if you're just selling a service that's a commodity, like graphic design, doing a flyer, doing a, a website, that is selling a commodity and that is not something you want to get into. That's not the business that you want to be in. You want to be in the business of providing value and solving complex problems. If a business owner comes to you and says, hey, I'm currently doing a million dollars a year, but I want to do two million dollars a year. OK, well, you have a million dollar challenge. What would that be worth to you? If I could get you to that two million dollars that you want to get to, what would that be worth? You're selling value. If I could give you a plan, give you a strategy, execute the tactics and get you to that $2 million, what would you be willing to pay for that? 20%? Would, 20, would a 20% cut be fair? So if somebody makes a hundred or a million dollars and you're gonna take a 20% cut versus selling hourly rate on stuff, what situation would you rather be in? So this is a really important thing to understand is you need to sell value, not price. Don't get into a pricing value or pricing battle. The people that are trying to hit you on the price are not the customers you're gonna to wanna to deal with. They're the ones that want everything yesterday. They want it perfect. They're gonna have a nitpick. And those are what I call the nightmare clients. So sell value. The right customers will see that and they'll see your confidence and they'll see your professionalism and you'll land that client that way. The sixth mistake is lacking confidence and belief. I'll tell you a very quick story. About a year ago, I joined a mastermind group and that mastermind group cost me over $15,000 to be a part of. Now that's a big investment. I could look at that as an expense or I can look at it as an investment. But when I did that sales call, the sales guy on that call, who's also my mentor, put me up against the wall when I asked him this question. And he said this and it absolutely changed my mind and my perception and my mindset forever. And I wanna share this with you guys. The question was, don't you think that you're overselling this specific product or the specific service too much? Like you put a $25,000 price on just that. Like, don't you think you kind of inflated the price a little bit, man? And he said, no, not at all, honestly. I think I undervalued it. His reaction to that question proved to me in that moment and showed me something in that moment that changed me forever. And I realized that he was so confident and he believed so much in what he was doing for his clients and how he was serving them and at the level he was serving them that what he was doing was actually way below the value of what it was really worth. And so when I pushed that question to him, it made him realize that and not like, yeah, man, I need to have a rebuttal for this guy, but man, this guy just made me realize that I'm underselling what I'm doing and I could honestly sell this for more. And that confidence and that belief and knowing so confidently in what he was doing made me realize that I didn't believe 100% as much as he did in what I was doing. And so I really want you to understand and believe in your mind, your body, and in your spirit that what you do for a living, whether it's graphic design, web design, motion design, marketing, whatever that is for a living, you have to believe in that so much 
and believe and know that you are doing something better for them than any of your competitors, that you're gonna serve them at a higher level than anybody else will, that you will overpromise and over deliver. This is really important. This is a really key piece to selling. If people see a lack of confidence and they push on you in certain areas about your price and you back down and you go down in price, they're bopping you on the head and you're taking that hit. Otherwise, you're gonna take that back from them. You're gonna bop them back on the head and say, no, 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 like my mentor did to me, I'm actually undervaluing myself and I could be selling this for more right now. So this is a great opportunity for you. Take it or leave it, Mr. Customer. I'd love to work with you, but I don't need to work with you. It gives you the leverage to win in that negotiation. The seventh and the last one, and this is probably the thing that I'm most guilty for, but something I'm very mindful of now, is talking too much. God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. I know that's an old saying, it's cliche, but it's the truth. You need to do twice as much hearing as you listening, not just hearing, but twice as much listening as you do speaking. And you need to listen. Let them tell you what their pain problems are, what their issues are, what their wins are, what makes them happy, what makes them mad, what some of the successes are that they've had in their life. Really get to know them and ask questions and do some mirroring. If you don't know what mirroring is, I would encourage you to go watch the masterclass that Chris Voss does. It's really, really powerful. Mirroring is just basically you're repeating back the last two to three words of what somebody's saying to you. It makes people feel heard. It makes people feel appreciated. And this is a really good strategy to utilize in a sales conversation. So I just want to make sure that you know these seven sales mistakes that people are making is they're not spending enough time listening and they're doing too much talking. So if this video brought you value, please do me a huge favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you drop a comment and introduce yourself. I'm building a community here. This isn't just about making videos, but this is about teaching you guys and bringing you into the Instagraphics Pro Network. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.